keep up you know what i'm saying i gotta keep up i gotta do what it is that i have to do in order to keep up so family um as i'm trying to get um all of our systems going because y'all know we got quite a few channels on facebook i'm gonna eventually take some of them down so that we can have the focus on uh, giame as we slowly but surely grow um, our chat is up. I want to thank all those that's taking time this morning to sit with us and to toast 
um, toast our ancestors as we do on a daily basis. All right, um, so before we get into the toast, there's some stuff we got to cover, family. I got, I just, you know what I'm saying? First off, my camera's kind of crooked. Let me welcome you to the congregation of the mighty. The home of the stubborn minority. The place where your hustle builds muscle. This is Gianni Journey Media. <laughs> this is the Heart of a Simple production. And of course, you know this is the Daily Toast. <laughs> strive, strive, strive to blow up your old paradigm. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the black city. But I don't think it went out. But I did send it out. <clears throat> the Black Sigma came late last night from a show last night. I had an um, excellent interview with Ronald Hummins, who will be doing a, a 24-hour hunger strike um, to raise awareness for PTSD that affects um, black children. Um, he will be on the, the, the grounds of the State House from 8 a.m., on the 14th to 8 a.m. on the 15th. You know what I'm saying? So if you can support in any way, family, why not? Why not? You know what I'm saying? Because this is um, this is kind of the mandate of Giami. If you look at the hashtags that go along with Giami, you'll see um, 224. Hashtag 224 self-help process. And what is this? Family, this is where those of us in Giami take a... Uh, a pledge, a pledge to spend two hours a day working, working on ourselves, working for our community, working in our community, two hours a day, you know, considering, considering that those that want to destroy the community, they are working 24 seven. Don't, don't be fooled. Do not think, do not think that your enemies are not out there on the grind, on the hustle, trying to destroy everything, everything set you back in every possible way. Like this morning, this morning I had to post up an article and it didn't show up for some reason. I don't know what's going on. All right, so, um, so there's been new findings that's talking about, you know, the I, I did a show called Impeachment or Illusion or something like that, or Disillusionment or something like that, where the the whole focus is shifting to this whole impeachment piece. And they're trying to, to get our focus, and they're trying to use smoke and mirrors and every old trick in the book, divide and conquer, um, you change their attention. They're trying to do all this stuff to get us off of this whole reparations piece but everything is bringing us back so one in, in one of the studies that they had on um where is it popped up on my um news feed and i thought i shared it but obviously either i didn't or um well let me go on and upload let me um go on and try try this real quick well anyway what they're talking about is that in the probe on <clears throat> Russia interfering with the elections, they are saying that Russia focused on the United States. And info, uh, not just focused on the United States, but they focused on African Americans, like 68% or something like that of their tweets and stuff was guided towards African Americans based on race. Now, I got a question for you. Did it take the Russians, would it take the Russians to let you know that shit ain't right in America for you? <clears throat> I mean, because this is, this is, this is the tone that is coming off to me, right? We didn't notice some of the shit going on until the Russians started tweeting the shit, because this is what we got to understand. We didn't know that we needed reparations before the Russians. We didn't know that the police was killing us on, on, um, on, uh, unfairly. Uh, uh, until the Russians. We didn't even notice the whole Am Amber Geiger trial until Russia. You know what I'm saying? I mean, according to some of this, you, you, you didn't recognize, you didn't notice the, the, the significance of a Trayvon Martin or, 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 or the little rice kid up in Cleveland. You didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? We needed the Russians to let us know that we have been getting our ass kicked 
we have been we have been restricted from receiving the full benefits of our country of the country that we built we need to rush to point that out for us see this is getting back into the the the, the fear mongering because once again <clears throat> if you if you are in power you have to make enemies you got to have enemies or make enemies because it make it how can I put it? It makes it easier for you to push off all your problems on your enemies. You got to have scapegoats. Right? So right now, America's using the nat na um the natural um uh, the natural tension between Russia and the United States to their benefits. And look, look, the Russians is fucking with our Negroes. Everything was cool to the Russians. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't no issues until the Russians started doing it. So now we're going to come back to this whole bot argument and stuff like that. Come on, family. Tamir Rice. Not Samira Rice. It's Tamir Rice, man. So, nah. Shouts out to Brother Shock. I see you out there. Um, But, unfortunately, Restreamio don't see you out there. I wonder what's going on here. And all types of going. It's Tamir Rice, not Shamira Rice. But anyway... Family, you know, um, we're gonna do this toast, but then also there's another there's another article that I wanted to kind of go through with y'all real quick. Just take a couple of minutes, only take a couple of minutes, right? This is an older article that I pulled down off of Vox, and Vox is a very I mean, Vox is real good. Vox is real good. So let's go and check out what Vo what Vox got to talk about here. They say Income inequality is changing how we think, live, and die. This article came out in 2018. Oh, that's his mother. Okay. Income inequality is changing how we think, live, and die. Why society might be more stable if we have more poverty and less inequality. Huh. More poverty and less. All right, boom. We got... Uh, research researcher Keith Payne has found something surprising. When people flying coach are forced to walk past the Papa First Class flyers in the front of the plane, the likelihood of some sort of rage incident rises sharply. In his book, The Broken Ladder, Payne, a social psychologist at the University of North Carolina, argues that humans are hardwired to notice relative differences. When we're reminded that we're poor or less powerful than others, we become less healthy, more angry, and more politically polarized. Hmm. I reached out to Payne because his argument seems to lead to a counterintuitive conclusion. American society should be more... Um, American sh society will be more stable if we have more poverty and less inequality. I don't kind, I you know I don't kind of get how he came to that conclusion, but I right, I mean there's another there's a there's an opposite end of that conclusion he could come to too. I reached out to him to see if that's what he comes to believe after writing this book. A lightly edited transcript of our conversation follow. Tell me what you think we least understand about social costs of inequality. One big misunderstanding is that when people are start. When people start talking about inequality, their minds go straight to poverty. But poverty is only half of the equation. Inequality is about the size of the gap between the wealth, the wealthy and the poor. It's obviously important to be con concerned about poverty and to alleviate the suffering that accompanies it. But that's still only half the problem. What's the other half of the problem? What people underappreciate is how having extreme inequality driven by the high end of wealth also causes trouble for society and for people's well-being poverty is related but separate uh, poverty is a related but separate problem the pres the presence of extreme inequality destabilizes a society in ways that are hard to understand but absolutely devastating let's go on Let's get into get into that. What sort of problems spring from these wealth gaps? So now y'all know that right now we have the most extreme wealth gap in human history. Here in this country. You know, I know some of y'all out there living 
living living good. You know what I'm saying? Got the good life going on out there, right? But there is a wealth gap that you would not even believe. You really need to go and take some time to look at it. All right, let's get into what what sorts of problems spring from these wealth gaps. For starters, it produces a serious health problems. And not subjective problems, but objective health problems like chronic disease, obesity, drug and alcohol problems, and ultimately shorter life expectancies. You see comparatively, comparatively higher rates of these health issues in countries with the most income inequality. And that's after controlling for average income. Sean Ealing. I know what you mean when you say controlling for average income, but can you make that clear for the people who don't have a background in statistics? Sure. This keeps paying. Sure. It means that if you take two people who make the same income, but one lives in a very high inequality place and one lives in a low inequality place, the person in the high, in the high inequality location is more likely to deal with these chronic diseases more likely to deal with these drugs and alcohol problems, more likely to actually die sooner than the same person living in a low e inequality environment. The high inequality countries also have more crime. Wow. More incarceration, more school dropouts, things that we normally associate with poverty. But in wealthy developed countries, they're actually more closely linked to inequality than to poverty rates. I want y'all to think about that. All right, <clears throat> we'll come back. Maybe not right now, you know, because we we are we're on a time limit. But this is Sean Illing. It seems obvious that wealthier people with more resources and better access to medical care will be healthier than poor people. But when you compare across societies, you find that the average person in a high inequality society like America is less healthy than the average person in a low inequality society like Sweden or Norway. How do you explain this gap? Keith Payne, the perception of inequality around us has a couple of different effects. One is that it makes the average person feel poor in comparison to those who have more. And the second is that it raises our expectations. It raises our standards for what we think is to be normal. Brother Kwan made great Ujima to you as well. Now, that all seems very subjective, but when you perceive yourself as poor compared to other people, that sets off a chain of events that translate into physical outcomes. Sean Illing, that's what I'm getting at. What's the pathway from subjective perception to uh, one's real relative poverty to actual physical health problems? One pathway is stress. If you perceive yourself as relatively low on the social ladder compared to others around you, it's stressful and the body treats that stress in the same way it treats a physical threat. So if you get the fight or fight response, the, the fight or flight response, you get immune responses that in short in the short term are good, but if they go on over a long term, over weeks or months, they can cause health problems. Family, I want you to think about this. I want y'all really, really check out this article. Break this article down. How does this apply to your life? Because not only do you suffer from wealth inequality, you also suffer from the stress of being ADOS, being black. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we, we constantly talk about that. We just had the brother on last night talking about PTSD for the children and some of the causes for PTSD. So now we got this whole wealth inequality piece. Let's read just a little bit more. Another pathway is that feeling lower on the status ladder compared to other people change the way we approach decision making. In our own minds, it makes us riskier in our decisions. We focus more on the short term as opposed to the long term. So you have more people playing the lottery, taking payday loans, making questionable choices to try to get ahead economically. The long term effect of these choices are usually bad economic, economically, emotionally, and physically. You also find that high inequality societies are more polarized, more chaotic, and more dysfunctional. What accounts for this? What you find is that people who perceive this as Keith Payne, 
who wrote the book, what you find is that people who perceive themselves as having low status in society often search for meaning in various ways. And one and one form that takes is believing in conspiracy theories. People disillusioned by their status in society look for various kinds of patterns around them, ways to justify their place, and that often takes irrational forms like conspiracy theory, uh, theories. Other times it takes more normative forms like enhanced religious devotion. Damn. Y'all hear this? Feeling lower status also, also has the effect of leading people to feel that the system is rigged against them. And so you bet you hear a lot in the news about lower education, white voters feeling left behind as a function of the current economy and the kind of political consequences that that has. The feeling of being left behind is a real thing, but it's not necessarily traceable to the fact that factories have gone overseas and that robots are replacing jobs. That's clearly part of it. But the resentment is far worse when it happens in a society where people with higher educations and good social connections are getting wealthier and wealthier. It's not hard to see how that can create political problems. Right, let's go on. Let's just go on just a little bit farther. Let's go on just a little bit farther. Is it fair to say that economic inequality produces more political tribalism? Y'all know I'm talking about tribing up, so I must be affected by this wealth inequality as well as getting, as well as the struggle out here with this beautiful black skin. I wouldn't call it more polarization, but you can call it political tribalism, and it happens on the left and the right. Again, people look for ways to make sense of the world that seems unfair, and often they do that by uh, retreating into tri uh, tribal identities, whether it's for political, religious, or ethnic, or whatever. A lot of our psychological problems you point to stem from our tendency to measure ourselves in terms of social status. This is Sean Ealing, the person interviewing. But humans have done this since we started living in groups, and certainly since the emergence of private property and individual rights. We're just hardwired to detect relative differences. Is there something unique about what we're seeing now? And I'll stop after this, unless it gets better. There's nothing new about this psychological tendency to measure ourselves against others. That's no different than it was a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. What's different today is the scale of the inequality around us, which is about as high as we've ever seen since we started keeping records of it. So go and read that for yourself, family. Go and read that for you. This is a 2018 article from Vox talking about how income inequality is changing how we think, live, and die. By Sean um, Ealing on Vox, and it was done September 25th, 2018, posted at 8.57 a.m. And that's on the Geometry Journey timeline. It didn't make the newsletter, though. It didn't. I don't think it made the newsletter, though. I don't think it made the newsletter, though. You know, um, but all right, family. We're going to complete the newsletter. We will be getting those out. Also, remember to check, check us out. Check out our e-course, our free e-course. I'm going to post up the link. FreeGNJEcourse.com, FreeGNJEcourse.com. And I know y'all be like, man, brother, hi, Tim. If you say that one more time, man, to the same five people. Y'all never know when people are popping in and listening, family. We got a whole bunch of new friends and family on YouTube that might not be tuning in live now, but they're tuning in at later times. And then on top of that, if you go and look at the Giami Journey um numbers on youtube they have jumped they have made a significant jump so we're gonna keep on making headway we're gonna keep pressing forward we're gonna keep on tribing up right we're gonna keep tribing up we're gonna keep building we're gonna keep educating because that's what we got to do and like i said it's part of our mandate because as a giami man 
I am I am pledging two hours, two hours out of every 24 hour period to self development, to people development, to tribe development. And I do that every day. As a matter of fact, see, and this is what people don't understand. When you start dedicating yourself to something and you start working towards mastery, the universe start opening up, opening up more time for you to do what it was you was doing. So over the years of me practicing this 224 self-help process, I have been getting more and more and more time to work on that. Now, and resources have been opened up for me. Now, we're going to see how far that's going to go. Because we get to a point in time where eventually voices like mine are going to have to be shut down, family. It's coming. So y'all need to go and get ready for it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, 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 I need to prepare you for it. This is why I'm telling y'all to get on the black signal while we still able to maintain it so that we can, one, one, get everything out to you, let you know when we have our major broadcast. And then also, right, because I will be sending out a request for email addresses as well through, through this right here. Um, hold on. This is from Sister Regina Grand Rising. How timely. I'm up working on my um, TED. Uh-oh. Yeah, oh, she's about to be on TED Talks, family. I forgot to. Um, well, I told y'all already, you know, talk about black philanthropy as a means to address issues of what uh, of wealth disparity and community ownership. Uh-oh. When is, when is your TEDx talk? Um, so people know. I mean, I know the tickets are probably already gone, but go and post it up anyway. And and also to remind us to be looking for your video. We need to go and we need, we need to go and get, get, get you as many views as we possibly can. You know what I'm saying? So that possibly you get, you know, let's go and build. All right, so family, we raise up our glass. We toast the creator by whatever name you choose to call the creator. We lift up the glass and we salute that creator on this grand and beautiful fall morning. It finally feel like fall. So I'm going to have to bust out one of my hoodies. You know what I'm saying? One of those Giami Journey long sleeve shirts before I go outside. Right? So we raise up our glass and we say, I say, from then family, we move to our list of our ancestors and we go straight in and we read because we raise our glass and we raise our minds for our ancestors. Miles Brown, Ms. Ann, Robert Tech, Sonny Davis, Herman Brown, Sr. Rosalie, Tilly, Georgia, William Walter, Chris Penn, Gaston, Aline, Al, Chris, I'm Finn, Cleveland, and Geneva Brown, Marco Ellis, Walsh Ellis, Cecil Ellis, Abar Brown, Gina Gaines, Herman Brown, II, Barbara Twigs, Walsh Ellis Jr., Kelly Ellis, Nikki Ellis, Jamon Jones, Jeremiah Tapp, and John Fillard. Uh, it's going to be at King Lincoln in Bronzeville on October 25th, Ted X. John Fillard, Montague Pittman L. No more X. A pet mod, Rob Malik, of course, Dr. Man, Williams, Gojo Kamal, Elder Millie Dixon, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusuf Weston, Elder, um, Elder Ajani, Elder Ron Coleman, Elder Robert Donaldson, Alfred Brofro, Hector Jr., Jay Edwards, Kyle R. Harris, Grace Lundy, Inez Harris, William Bill Moss, Phyllis Rose, Sterling, and Lucy Wright, Derek L. Pulley, and the Luxor Brothers, Miss Edith Brooke Crawley, Miss Marie Nelson. Mr. Fred Crawley, C. Ms. Jerry Brunson, Mr. Lonzo Johnson, Ms. Marie McDowell, Janice Foster, Charles Jordan, Kill Smith, Walter Smith, Richard Trey, Frank Johnson, Mary Franklin, Jimmy Williams, Daniel Ford, George Gibson, Nana Loretta Clark, Arnaz McCray, Fritz Clark, Frankie Just, Kitty Just, Derek Runderman, Virginia Roger, Reverend James Smith, Lewis Henderson, Kevin Spranling, Mary Elizabeth Walker, Rain Walker, C. Sir Jane Carter, Michael Boyd, Jordan Jr., Kelly D. Russell, Susie B. Smith, Teresa. Teresa Clay, Melvin Dale Hodge, Melvin Dale Hodge Jr., Herman Copeland, Mildred Copeland, Jenny Clay, Bert Beatty, Sarah Weller, Be the Farmer, I Go So Sue, Cheryl Harvey, Aunt Charmaine, Aunt Evelyn, Theodis Hasbury, Harvey Hasbury Sr., Linda Dickinson, T.C. Islam, Terrell Dunbar, Will Thomas, Sarah Berry, Mark Walsh, Merle B. Thorne, Pearl G. Thorne, Ida Johnson, Florence M. Carter, Joanne Thorne, Eric Trisha Lewis, Juanita Wright, Robert Wright, George Wright, Mary Eliza Frederick Davis, Mary Elizabeth Rogers, May Esther. Mary Esther Keisha Reese, Linda Watson Hammonds, Jarrell Giles Watson, Sparrow Slimmy, Selvin Lewis, Andrew Holmes, Pearl Moore, Percy Moore Jr., Mitchell Owens, Booker T. Bolton, Charlie Hunt, Sammy Stover, Hitter Pearson, Sturgeon Thornton, Richard Thornton, Labina Hall, Freeman Banks, Mae Moss, Ophelia Peacock, Willie Thornton, Napoleon Kennedy, Mark Ramsey, Paul Ramsey, Matt Ramsey, Dave Ramsey, Charles E. Thornton, Frankie Quells, Jeremy Thornton, 
Bernie Squirrels, Honest Gene Jackson, Perky Johnson, Teresa Mormon, Leon Johnson, Charles Bell, Vivian Ramsey, S.C. Johnson, Del Rita Johnson, Leon Johnson, James W. West Sr., James Parham, Dana Jones, Ian World, James Farman, Mary Chavez, Leon Grace, Bessie had a, um, Bessie Johnson, had an investor, Mary Moreland, Paul Moreland, Elder Caleb, Rosemary Martinelle, Dr. Amitab Wellman, Fred Douglas Trick Sr., Thelma Tricks, Thomas and Lula Berry, Lacey Eleanor Howe, Frank Russell and Davis, Fred Douglas Tricks, the second being the Tricks, Reverend Andy Moore, Helen Fuller, Eugene Jackson Sr., Richard Ellis, Silas Alexander, Charles Maxwell, Percy Mel Alexander, Arthur Reynolds, Stanley Lockhart, Ricky Lockhart, William Lockhart, Woodrow Lockhart, Brenda Porter, Deacon Hargrove, Carla Sawyer, Andrew Parker, Doris Donald, Ellis Murphy, D'Amico Russell, Dean Mon Aries, Gina Ruth Jones, Jaina Callahan, William Walter West, Nigel Perez, Elder Besiege, Filotti, Jim Robson, Gladys Johnson, Valerie Clark, John and Mary Sullivan, Dirk Johnson, Antonio Johnson, Elise Waters, Dupree Hines, Anis Bostic, Anna Bostic, Winnie Fried Scannabay, Wilson Haley, Emma Hine, Phyllis Lee, Eugene Spratling, Kevin Spratling, Charles Wooden, Penny Brown, Lord Roy Lee, Print Up Jr., Miriam Johnson, Wilbur Long, Maya the Cannon, Janice Carter, Michael Carter, Leon Pina Carter, Michael Carter, William Carter, Lisa Jordan, Charles Lee Mosley, Dorothy R. Blair, Ransom Evans Sr., Sam Evans Sr., Naylon Blair Sr., Edward Stevens, Sue Ann Stevens, Joe Davis, Timothy Butler, Gene Holmes, Dana Jones, Peter Charles, Christy Nichols, Cardinal Robinson, Rosemary Charles, Ada Pearl, Bob Ingalls, Jack Wallace, Warren M. Finch, Warren P. Finch, Tim Ingalls, R.G. Finch, William Billis Lee Jr., Jennifer Sensabar, Hazel Gaston, Jay Bradley, Brian Watson Jr., Kaniko Parsons, Jason Cathy, Bradford, Thomas Bradley, also known as Uncle Buki, also known as Gypsy, Reverend Roosevelt Warrior I, Stacey Trice, Frank Smith, Mother Bertha, Michael Leonard, Dave Brown, Ruth Carter, June Cox, Ruth Cox, Paula Cox, Ronald Irvin, Judy Hubbard, Irene Johnson, Francis Bruce Jefferson, Dan Wilkinson Sr., Emma McClendon, Jerry Doyle, Mina Robinson, Mary Nichols, Patricia Williams, Shabaka Ture, Greg G. Duke Gibson, Donna Hill, Richard Glebus, Lee Irby, Tommy Irby, Boy Irby, Jim Gosher, George and Hallie Johnson, Archie and Margaret Armstead, Diane Scott, Yonker Armstrong, Claire Fox, Gene Evans, Archie Beck, Anna McGill, Charles McDaniel, Christine Cottrell, Al Becker, Alice Arnold, Arthur Arnold, Hattie Reed, Charles Reed, Eula and Andrew Baker, Patricia and Edwin Brooks, Gwendolyn and Bob Hatch, Kim Vernon, Bradley Kim, Janie here, Tell Me Kate, Spencer Sturgis, Sally Mae Baker, Ethel Baker, Creola Baker, Geneva Baker, Aaron Eno, Baby Hatch, Had Senior, Mally Miller, Ozzy Hatch, Dad Cleveland, Mother Gibson, Alice Nixon, John Bowie, Lester and Rachel Saunders, Dorita Ross, Will Ross, Robert Nelson, Francis Stevenson, Willie Roy Stokes, Lady Johnson, Fletcher Swan, Manny and Charlie Scott, Adam Casey, Thomas Cooper, Vivian Stevenson, Mona Ann Lewis, Cornetta Lyman Lewis, John Jackson, William Dallas Lewis, Mary Francis, Chappelle Jackson, Michael Slade, Joanne Perkins, Richard Jackson, Martha Ford Dawson, Big Mama, Nanny Harris, Eva Ford, James Harrison, Margaret Towns, Mary Williams, Leroy Q. Heath Sr., Ever Moore, <coughs> Miss Benella, Abbas Motley, Geraldine Elizabeth, Douglas Thompson, Erlton Houston, Lud Alls, Elijah Alls, Jerome Alls, Henry West Statton, <coughs> Joe Jamel Alls, Ann Pierce, Donald Carter, Lily Green, Nathan Green, Beth Bond, John Dewey, Ruth Beard, Tim Butler, Remy Laura Newton, J.B. Foggy, Thomas Newton Sr., Barbara Naeem, Jeanette Sanders, Jerry C. Sanders, Roy Pruitt, H.J. <coughs> Bradley Sr., Henry Wilson, Rufus Jenkins, Minnie Wilson, Catherine Sanders, Miro Ellis, Elizabeth Sanders, Henrietta Irby, Mildred Armstead, Margaret Armstead, Catherine Anthony, Willie Brown, Charles Walker Sr., Charlie Walker, Cecil Russell, Diane Irvin, Harun Phillips, Wayne Ford, Margaret Logan, Phyllis Barnett, Lee Irvin Sr., Michael Irvin, Ozella Watson, Hugo Watson, John Caldwell Sr., Robert Lee Caldwell, Nevaeh Mitchell, Ron McCormick Sr., Sabrina Easley, Rashawn Easley, Javaya McCormick, Barbara Ann Reed, Dorothy Ann Reed, John Reed, Shekel Maha Reed Jr., John Reed Jr., Patricia Reed, Edward R. Benson Sr., Ethel H. McNair, Lois Fernandez, Jacqueline Broadus, Reginald Oliver, Mazarin Corporal, George Swan, Edmonia Grayson, Charles Scott, Charles H. Scott, Michael Morgan, Charlene Morgan, Sybil Evers McNabb, Annie Ferguson, William Ferguson, Shelby McClendon. We have Joella Giles, James Carswell, Liberta Adams, also known as Isis, Elder Shaka McNair, Anthony Brown. Dr. Poor, Lonnie Gaucher, Cousin Tony, Michael Johnson, James, Jimmy Johnson, Barbara Shang Lewis, Ronald Shelton Jr., Damian Todd, Westina Banks, Joseph Bingham, Quincy, Mama, Aunt Lady, Abraham Isaac Cundup, Aunt Barbara Lewis, Renee Johnson, Joy, Ryan Ross Riggins, Dramate, Marcus Price, Ness Words, Michelle McCarroll, Demetrius Beard, Herb Jefferson, Ralph Mickens, Eric Walker, Crazy Sample, Candace Simmons, Severin Clayton, Linda Jones, Sade Garner, Melvin Scott Sr., Elder Clarence Lumpkin, Elizabeth Johnson, Frank Smith, Stacey Trice, Denise Goray, Nathaniel Hassan Turner, Khaled is in transition, Nigel Turner, Demetrius Lewis Flint, Alberta Woods, Geno, Gene, Geneva Simmons, Daniel Tilly, Angeline Gant, Sharifa, Oscar Kane, Audrey Gripper, Dominique Nichols, Ruth Elaine Johnson, Teresa Sambu, Aunt Maxine, Uncle James, Henry Monga II, Tamara Dowdy, Nicole Harris, Julia Taylor, Richard Bozeman, Ruth Carter, John Carter, Mr. Thornton, 
Johanna, Jasandra Lynette Lewis, Henderson Mosley, Charles Jordan, Henry Essex II, Fannie L. Webb, Dan Walton, Al Lauti, Sue Walton, Emma Walton, James Randolph Giles, or Giles, Sonny, Pete Walton, William Walton, Fred Powers, Elijah Juan Hakeem and Como, Alberta T. Davis, Charles Davis, Willie R. Mackey, Dr., also known as Dr. Creamy Mackey, Victor Bowden, Trusilla Kitty Berger, Lucy White, Robert Lee White, Emma, Emma Jean White, Talton, Roger White, R.L. White, Jesse White, Ruby Jewel White, Johnson Carl White, Desi Woods, T. Lar Woods, Lennox, Jim Woods, Lizzie Woods, Juanita Alexander Brown, Cynthia Ann Wright, Richard Dorsey, Annie Simpson, Jamara, Jamara Simpson, Regina Hopkins, Joseph Simpson, Nettie Dorsey, and Eleanor Hopkins. We raise our glass up to all of our ancestors and we salute with a mighty and a powerful and resounding Ashe. And we say, y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got it, right? So we move on. From their family, move to the present moment. Right now, we are in the moment of Ujima. We want to give a round of applause to all of our Ujima born. <laughs> My Jima babies is on you today. Family, activate those reticular formations. We are in the moment of Ujima. We are on the day of Ujima. So now we are going out and we are going to seek, find, catch, and release Ujima. When you see it in the community, take a picture of it, post it up, right? Because it's happening all the time. We just have to practice learning how to see it. Even in some of the most difficult places, we got Ujima in action. For those that don't speak the language, Ujima means collective work and responsibility. Got it? Collective work and responsibility. The Mahdi principle of the day is righteousness. Respect is what we teach through the M7 for the day. Blue is the color, hence my shirt. I'm going to get a darker blue one real soon. I got to re-up on some more of the merch. Uh, we got vibration. Vibration is a hermetic law. Male name for the day is Kwaku. Female name Akua. I think we might got a Akua. I don't know, but we're going to give our Ujima born a round of applause. <laughs> we're going to raise our glass in this powerful moment. Maintaining the pact with our ancestors and also maintaining our pact with the future generations right in the now. Right now is when it happens, is when it goes down. And what we do will determine the fate of our children, our children's children, on to infinity. Family, please remember it's bigger than you. All right? We raise up our glass and we say, Ashe. From there, we move to the future. We toast our children, our children's children, on to infinity. And we toast and we say, I say. All right, family, from there we move to all of our relations. And we say, I say from all of our relations. Of course, you know where we go. We go from here. And that's that selfish toast. What is it that you need in this moment to move towards the better you, towards the higher you, the most powerful you? What is it that what is it that you need? We let raise our glass for that. And we say, I say. Last but not least, I'm going to toast to the most powerful, most beautiful, most uplifting, most outstanding, the best person in the room right now i raise my glass to you i'm talking about you yes don't don't be looking around i'm talking about you i toast you and we say i say i say i say family i wish you peace power and joy no peace power joy and 100 years and last but not least i'm gonna give you out let you out with the words from Jiamme K N. This is our thing, family. We want the black media to grow. We want the black media to prosper. We have to take care of it, family. We got to be able to finance our spokespeople. We got to be able to finance those that represent us, even in small amounts. You'd be surprised when, because it take you know, you know, water starts with drops. 
But the drops start coming, and if the if the if the, uh, if the drops start combining, we start having some problems. You know what I'm saying? Those of you that be having flooding basements, y'all know what I'm talking about. Start with a little trickle. Next thing you know, you got to move all your shit out the basement. So, family, I toast you, and I am out. I'm going to go and sip on this, and I'm gone. Ah. Have a great day.